now I'm going to present Phil to you, or this man. Thank you. gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to my almost best man's day, and I must say it's particularly nice of Mark and Zoe to dress up so nicely for it. <laughs> I was only talking to Mark a month or so ago about how my worst nightmare was to be a best man again. As I did it many years ago when it was a simple job of thanking people for coming and generally making sure the groom turned up. <laughs> Nowadays, all the best men seem to be cool, articulate entertainment machines. We're natural and relaxed, doing singing and dancing routines. Yeah, right. <laughs> Practiced over months and months in the build-up to the wedding. But thanks to Mark, a few weeks ago, he rang me up and said that my worst nightmare had come true. I said, wow, you want me to be your best man? He said, no, not quite. I'd like you to be my second best man, <laughs> as his best man had dropped out and nobody else wanted to do it. <laughs> what, what an honour, I thought, to be chosen from all those people who didn't want to do it to be his second best man. It was obviously my lucky day. Cheers, Mark. <laughs> I do feel somewhat on trial today, though. As Mark said, if I do a good job here... And I can be a proper best man at his next wedding. <laughs> You're not meant to laugh at your own jokes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it says laugh there. <laughs> Mark wrote it for me. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. And nice to see that most of you made an effort to dress for the occasion. I'm the cameraman. I'm the cameraman. I'd like to say on behalf of everyone how lovely the bridesmaids look today and are only rightly outshone by the beautiful bride Zoe. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's a sad day for single men everywhere as another beauty such as Zoe leaves the available list. <laughs> and ladies, I'm sure you'll agree with me today has passed by without much of a ripple. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> I don't know, I'm laughing, this bit is funny. <laughs> I first met Mark about 18 years ago when I had my kite and magic shop in Lincoln and used to run a yo-yo club on Thursday evenings. <laughs> that's not a funny bit. Seriously, that's not a funny bit. All oh, right. Can't you imagine Mark doing a yo-yo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was wrapped around his neck somewhere. <laughs> The dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he came to my shop one evening as a quiet, humble and polite young boy who was keen to listen and help others and was always very shy. And I'm sure you agree that Mark hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> well, not much. I remember when I first saw him as he came into my shop as a, scrawny, as a little scrawny kid from the country thinking to myself, Who's this Muppet? <laughs> Who'd have thought, 18 years later, he'd be here dressed as one? <laughs> Mark specifically asked me not to mention any of his past girlfriends, and sadly that's cut the speech short by a good three seconds. <laughs> but he's the man of the day, and I respect your wishes. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe told me when she first met Mark many years ago across a pool table she thought he was handsome from afar now she thinks he's far from handsome <laughs> I think Mark is set on doing some serious DIY to the house back home as he assured me earlier that after today him and Zoe will be banging and screwing at every opportunity <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
wrong, you? Show it to you, boy. I'll keep it short if I come down. Many of you will know that Mark does a lot of work for the local Chinese community in Lincoln, doing maintenance and building work, as he does. Uh, and it was while I was working with him at one of their large restaurants that a few of us got talking to this lovely Chinese lad who was helping us. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we were joking about nicknames that we had when the Chinese lad said that someone called him Pinky Winky. <laughs> And that, and that he didn't know what that meant as a nickname, whether it's to do with little finger or pigs or whatever. So I thought for a while about it, and I thought, that's not a nickname. That's, that's rhyming slang for chinky, pinky, winky, chinky. So I told him what I thought, and I said that it wasn't very kind. So I'd have a word with one of the builders, whoever it was, and tell them not to be so offensive. When I asked him to point out who he was, he said, it's Mark, he always calls me that. <laughs> Good old politically correct mark. <laughs> uh, now, down to the crunch. A lot of you know or realise by now that Mark calls me Phyllis. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't mind, but sometimes it's embarrassing if we're at customers' house. No, 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 no. And he shouts, Phyllis! Can you t shut off the hot water? Or, well, Phyllis, can you start draining the radiators? As I don't think it comes across very professional, and I worry that people think he's an idiot. I know I do. <laughs> anyway, one such time occurred as we worked at a house around Christmas a few years ago during a heavy freeze. Loads of people had burst pipes. We called at an, at an address in Lincoln, in town, main town, to find cold water filling up a guy's house. He was quite well spoken, and I think it was one of his rented properties. Mark had called me Phyllis a few times while we were there, and as usual, I didn't think anything of it, as there seemed no known reason why he would call me that. Anyway, after a while, the customer came through and quietly said to me, why does Mark keep calling you Phyllis all the time? <laughs> so I said, well, the only logical reason I could think of is that he's a twat. <laughs> I was sweating. I was sweating there. That's the like... clean version. The guy was a bit taken aback, but saw the funny side of it. Yeah. I now realise Mark's not that bad. And it's just one of the things that makes Mark who he is. Mark. I'd now like to offer five words of wisdom to help Mark with his journey into marriage. Fail out, no. Fail out, yeah. <laughs> Number one, the best way to remember your anniversary every year is to forget it once. <laughs> You'll never forget it again. <laughs> Second is always remember these three little words you need to say at the right time. You're right, dear. Okay? In times of trouble, remember these helpful words from Oscar Wilde. Women are to be loved, not understood. That's a good one. <laughs> Number four is always, but always, get on with your mother-in-law. Mark says he hasn't spoke to Kath in six months. Not that really he doesn't love her, but he just, just doesn't want to interrupt her. <laughs> Mark also pointed out, although I thought it wasn't a very good thing to say, but he insisted, that an anagram of mother-in-law is woman Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, number, <laughs> number five, and on a final disturbing thought, and this is absolutely true, if all you couples here today turn to face each other, all the couples face each other, stare into each other's eyes, Statistically, you're looking at the person most likely to murder you. <laughs> I'm not looking at you. <laughs> OK, I'd like to say, Mark, how lucky you are to be leaving here today having gained a wife who is loving, caring and warm-hearted. A wife who is funny, radiant and popular. 
and a wife who would do anything to help others. And Zoe, <laughs> how lucky you are to be leaving here today having gained a gorgeous dress and a lovely bouquet flat. <laughs> I was, I was talking to Kath earlier about how she felt about her daughter getting married, and she said it only seemed like yesterday she was going to bed with a dummy, and look at her now. Sorry. More petals. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone here sharing Mark and Zoe's special day and I also have a few messages from people who couldn't be here today who want to pass on their best wishes <coughs> this one is uh, dear Mark, sorry we couldn't make it to your special day but we felt it, felt it would have been too emotional for us losing such a special guy like yourself We'll see you again soon, and that's from all the girls at Cloud9. <laughs> 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 okay, we've got another one, got another one here. Uh, dear Mark, sorry I couldn't make it to you and Zoe's wedding, but I couldn't get time off work. Hope all goes well with you both, and we'll see you when you return. P.S. You're a bit of a twat, but love you anyway. And that's from Pinky Winky the Chinky. We've <laughs> <laughs> uh, got another one here. This is airmail one, this is. Just coming in now. Just coming in, yeah. This is something up. Not now, please. <laughs> uh, a final one. Uh, dear Mark and Zoe, sorry I had to let you down with the catering, but I received a nasty email from one of your guests about the quality of my food, food and will now not be attending. And that's from uh, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally, you'll be glad to hear. Finally, I would like to say on a serious note, I couldn't wish for a better, more genuine friend than Mark. He would seriously drop everything to help if needed, and he's always there when I constantly ring him for plumbing advice. <laughs> he's always happy and friendly, and always has time for people. Okay, I'd like to have a toast myself to Mark. <laughs> Mark. I'm to Phyllis. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be glad to hear that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And the green has a few places to see you. Yeah, top that. Top that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Woo! Get off! <laughs> 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 